What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about statistics and data. This is kind of an introductory video where we're going to get through a lot of the definitions uh, of the terms that we're going to be using in all of our subsequent uh, statistics videos. Let's get to it. So what are statistics? Generally speaking, it's using data to help answer questions and or solve problems. And when we talk about this term of data, when I say data, I'm talking about uh, a collection of variables. So that's what statistics are. Is? Are? I don't know. I can never remember if I'm supposed to be using singular or plural. But anyway, that's statistics. So when we use statistics, we kind of go through a general process. And that process we call the statistical inquiry process. And uh, here are the five steps that generally we follow with the statistical inquiry process. The first thing is to identify a problem that is to be studied or addressed, which is basically what we're talking about up here when we define what statistics are in a broad sense. Then we gather data. Now the data that we gather, this could be maybe we're taking some measurements of something. Maybe we're taking, uh, maybe we're making observations or maybe we are doing some sampling. Sampling is when you go out and get information from other people. And we'll talk about that in another video. After that, you organize the data. And the best ways to organize the data would be a spreadsheet. If you have the, uh, the access to a spreadsheet, or maybe if you don't have access to a spreadsheet, you go the old school way and you're using paper and pencil. Of course, you could use a pen too. I don't care. Either one works for me. And then we're gonna go into summarizing the data. And to do that, we're going to use some graphs or we could be looking at some numbers. Now the numbers, they typically will fall as values, uh, maybe numeric values, maybe we'll come up with some percentages. There's lots of things that you'll hear people talk about when they're summarizing a lot of information. You hear it and see it on TV all the time. You see it in uh, news articles. So there's lots of different ways that we can do that. But typically it's going to fall between some kind of graphical uh, display using various charts or it will be using uh, some version of numeric summary. And then finally, you're going to analyze and interpret and make a conclusion, which we call a conjecture from the data. A conjecture is when you are making a conclusion from a set of observations. Now, some things to, to keep in mind with this. The first thing is when you are doing this analysis, you need to try to be objective. That means that you are not trying to influence or have your own personal opinions jump in on, on the data that you have. And the other thing you want to do is you want to discuss any possible limitations. And discussing limitations means, you know, some things that might have influenced the outcome that you have. So you want to take a step back and think about how did I gather the data? Did I gather enough data? Did I gather the right uh, type of data? That's the kind of things that you want to consider with limitations. But the thing you don't want to do is automatically dismiss everything that you've done. I see this a lot when people write IAs or when people write reports using statistics is they'll discuss these limitations and they'll say, ah, oh, but you know what? It really doesn't mean anything. I didn't actually do that well with it because I've got all these different limitations. Yes, you want to be transparent with the limitations, but you don't want to just dismiss everything that you've already done. All right, so now let's look at some vocabulary. Uh, there's a lot of vocabulary that, that comes, in with, comes in with statistics, and we use a lot of these different terms uh, quite frequently. So it's a good idea to get a good feeling of what these different things mean. The first is population. The population is the entire group of, indi of individuals or items, if it's not a person, uh, that you are studying. A sample is a group used to summarize the characteristics or beliefs of the population. A statistic then is really a measure of data from the sample of the population. So what that means is uh, the measure of the data is kind of like the summary of the, the sample, right? We, we have this statistic, we've gathered a bunch of information, we've, con we've come to some conclusions, that's what the statistic is. These first three 
are talking about the general population, right? It's a, the population or a subset of the population or the summary of what we have of the population from the sample. The second set then is the, uh, the variables that create the data. Remember we said data is a collection of variables. So these are the different types of variables that we have. So the first one being categorical variable. The categorical variable is a variable which can uh, be classified by a quality or characteristic. Sometimes we also call this the qu a qualitative variable because it is a quality, right? Categorical is like characteristic. So, you know, all of these words are kind of all interchangeable. Categorical variable, qualitative variable. Um, we don't really use a characteristic variable, but we could say that it, it's a variable which classified by a quality or a characteristic. So basically it's descriptive in nature. The next one is the numeric variable. And this we sometimes call quantitative. And a numeric or a quantitative variable is a variable which has a numeric value where it makes sense, where it could make sense to average or calculate. Now, one thing to think about with the numeric value or a quantitative uh, is not all numbers make sense to be averaged. So you could think of grade level. Uh, we could say 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade for high school, right? Uh, but we typically wouldn't average that and say, oh, it's somebody in the 9.5 grade, right? Because that grade category, 9, 10, 11, 12, can also be categorized as uh, a, a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. So those would be more categorical in nature than quantitative in nature. So uh, whereas age, if we're looking at what is the average age of ninth graders, then it might be, you know, oh, they're 14 or oh, they're 15, or maybe you even got some 13 year olds in there. But then you have that, that uh, age, that makes a little bit more sense to average. So not all numbers are numeric, right? So you have to do a little bit of thinking. Don't automatically go there. Uh, make sure you give it a little bit of thought. Now within the numeric variables, we also have what we call discrete variables and what we have uh, called continuous variables. So a discrete variable is a variable which can be counted. So some examples might be uh, the number of cars in a parking lot or maybe the points that you get on a test. That would be discrete, those are countable items. Then we have continuous variables. Continuous variables are a variable or is a variable which can be measured. So some examples of continuous variables might be your height, uh, maybe weight, uh, maybe the time it takes to complete a race, right? And the way that I think of the, the difference between discrete and continuous, discrete I can count on my hand. Continuous is if I had the best measuring tools, I could continue to break down the, that measurement or that item into smaller and smaller decimals. So if I had height, yeah, I could say I'm 183 centimeters or 180. I can't remember. Am I 180 or am I 183? Whatever six foot is. I think it's around 180, somewhere in the 180 to 183. I digress. Uh, so whether you're doing that or you could say, ah, we could go into millimeters or we could go even smaller than that or we could go into inches and, and uh, you know, break it down further. So uh, half inches, uh, half a millimeter. Right, so those measurements, if we had the proper measuring tools, then we could break it down a little bit further. Uh, same with weight and same with time. Like if you're racing, you watch, uh, when, when I was younger, they would, uh, when I was watching the Olympics, people would be have an actual stopwatch that they would stop when, when somebody, like maybe a swimmer, hits the edge of the pool. But now we've, they've got these push pads and they go out to like the hundredth or, or thousandth of a second. And if they, if they improve that even further, then that could be broken down into the, the 10,000th, right? Uh, so these things that can be broken down further and further, that's going to be what you consider continuous. Everything that you can count is going to be discrete. So that that's really uh, the baseline of what we're going to use. Now we're going to be using these terms a lot, so you're going to want to make sure that you've got a good handle on these um, and hopefully uh, or and have this. So that was so that's basically it. We just wanted to get these terms out of the way because we're going to be using these things a lot in the subsequent videos. So make sure you know all of these terms and all this vocabulary um, and have that written down in front of you. I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me a like, uh, help spread the video to other people, and I will talk to you in the next video.